top lists for the best college majors or the college majors that are gonna make you the most money. And it's so basic, like that's not right. I promise you, your path is only gonna be good if you choose the right things that you wanna do in the process. Today, we're gonna be talking about college majors and it won't just be me giving you tips on how to choose a major, but I'll also try to translate some academic strengths to potential majors and go into like, potential career paths for those majors. So if you have absolutely no idea what you want to major in, or you have no idea where the major you want to do is going to take you, this is the video for you. But I do want to tackle some misconceptions about college majors and just give you some tips before we go into actually translating some strengths you guys may have to actual majors. I see this time and time again, where there's always top lists for the best college majors or the college majors that are gonna make you the most money. And it's so basic, like that's not right. I don't agree with most of those lists because they always put up STEM and they always put down the arts. And yes, like I am in STEM, I majored in astrophysics and I'm a data scientist now, but pay scale doesn't make a major good or not. And also a major isn't defined by potential career paths. You don't have to go into animation directly if you're an animation major. I have a friend who majored in animation at a great school and she's in marketing now in New York City. So there are so many different paths you can take and a major isn't defined by specific career paths. So just saying that you're not going to make much money because of a major is ridiculous. So I'm just going to tackle misconceptions like that and give you guys the tea because I'm really sick of seeing so many people bashing certain majors. So that was a long winded rant, but let's get straight into it. And if you're new to my channel, I'm Priya and I graduated from UChicago last year. And I'm just here to tell you everything I've learned along the way. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I am very new to YouTube. So that would mean a lot and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I am allowed to say that because I work as a data scientist. So yeah. So my first tip is something I've already kind of talked about, but your major does not have to relate to a defined career path. Your major gives you the foundational knowledge to learn how to analyze problems, gain qualitative skills such as writing, and it teaches you a special subset of information like in astrophysics. I learned a lot about space. I learned about the math behind space. I took a graduate class called high energy astrophysics. While it may seem that that relates directly to physics, it doesn't. I learned a lot of math. I learned programming skills because everything in astrophysics has to be analyzed. All of that data needs to be analyzed. So I learned how to program. I learned how to write because we had to write research papers. I learned so much in that one class and it wasn't just about physics. And I ended up not staying in physics. Like I am a data scientist. So that's my first biggest tip. It's about the knowledge you gain and the skills you gain not the major setting you up for your career path itself. The second is the continuation skills gained can relate to several career paths. So all those skills I mentioned that I learned in some of my astrophysics classes got me job offers in business, in technology, and in research. I got offers from management consulting firms, which is really just, you would think that you need a business degree for that, but you don't. You just have to prove to them that you have the analytical skills and the speaking skills to work with clients. Technology, because I worked with programming and research, because that's really the depth of physics, like that related the most to my major, I'd say. But the skills I've learned in my major can apply across all of these industries. So that's really important to know. And my last quick tip before we go into potential majors for you guys based on your skills, is that you should really choose your major based on interest. Don't choose your major because you think it's gonna make you a ridiculous amount of money. And don't choose it because it's what someone else wants you to do. I promise you, your path is only gonna be good if you choose the right things that you wanna do in the process. And you will make money, like you'll figure out a way to make money in our horribly capitalistic society. But if you don't major in what you love, you're gonna end up hating four years of college. You're gonna end up hating the career that you delve into after that. And and it's just going to set you up for unhappiness if you don't major in something that you're actually interested in. So if someone tells you majoring in art history isn't helpful, tell them that they were wrong and tell them why. They're wrong because you're going to learn how to write amazing essays. You're going to learn how to qualitatively analyze situations. 
which directly relates to consulting, which will make you a lot of money if you choose to go that route. So it isn't the majors that are going to define your paycheck. It's the job that you choose to apply to with your major. Out of all the data scientists at my company, yes, most of them majored in CS or statistics, but I didn't and I'm still there and I'm doing just as good as everyone else. And I got that job with my physics skills, knowing that I have this whole, whole other subset of things that I learned. I can also program like programming isn't my main skill, but the fact that I know it well enough to have the whole job surrounding it just shows the depth of like having a different major and having a different background than other people. You're going to bring a lot of skills that other people might not have. Okay, so now for the fun part, I tried to just like distinguish the different academic subjects and give you guys like potential skills that you're going to learn in those subjects in high school that may lead to specific majors or just give you ideas about potential majors. I made like a little thing on my iPad, like a little diagram, and I'm really excited to go through this. So let, let's get to it. So the first one, I will go through STEM subjects. So if you are really good at things like, you know, math, physics, chemistry, anything that's more technical, applied math heavy, it essentially means that you are extremely analytical and you are a good abstract problem solver. And that is one of the best skills to have. Like if you're given a big problem and you're asked to fix it, which is honestly most jobs, you can take a step back and actually figure out how to craft the right steps to get to that solution. So if you are a STEM person, there are two breakdowns that I thought of. So creative and exploratory or practical. So if you are someone who likes math, physics, chemistry, and you're more of a creative person, I would recommend majoring in something more theoretical, you know, pure math, physics, chemistry, biology, something like that. That's like a theoretical science, because when you're majoring in something theoretical, that's when you have the most abstract problems that you really have full creativity to try to pursue, even in research. And if you're more practical, it could mean that you like building things. It could mean that you're more inclined towards pursuing a major that's going to make you money. I'd say technology is a great route, like data science or technology. So you could get a degree in computer science, really major in anything. And you could get a job using all of these analytical skills that you've gained and go into quantitative finance, you could go into consulting, you could go into data science, technology, really anything. But I would say major wise, summing it up, you could major in the theoretical sciences, in engineering, computer science, anything that you think is going to be something you can continuously learn in. And after that, don't worry about future career paths because you can really apply to any job, which is what I did. And I picked the one that I thought I would make the most impact in. Moving on to business, I would say people who tend to major in something that's around the business field are just more practical people in general, because that's kind of how our world is constructed. I would say you could always major in something specific to business, like just if your school offers just a business degree. But I will caveat that by saying, I probably say you should go the more theoretical route so you can really learn the inner workings of the economy and just major in economics. You don't want to limit your options. I would say try to major in the most broadest thing that you're going to learn concrete skills in so that you can choose which subset you want to go into rather than majoring in accounting, realizing that you want to go into something else in business like quantitative finance and then realizing you don't have the math skills to do that because maybe they didn't teach you the exact things that you need to know for that in accounting. So I would always say try to go broader rather than narrow unless you're 100% sure, which is hard to do when you're just 16 or 17 trying to figure out what you want to major in. But yeah, for business, another thing I will say is think about computer science because every company is honestly a software company now. If you do want to end up in the startup realm, you don't want to outsource all of the knowledge in keeping up a website, keeping up the databases to keep track of expenditure or keep track of products you're selling because you're going to have to pay someone else so much more versus if you just had those skills, you could figure out how to upkeep things yourself without having to rely on other people as much. So I just want to put out there, if you're in the realm of business, I'd recommend seriously considering computer science because right now that's the future of business. 
Going into social sciences, if that's your academic strength, you certainly will have writing skills and qualitative analysis skills. So you could always major in political science, history, and if your college allows pre-law, because I feel like there's always a thread linking the social sciences with law, structure, politics, even history. Like you're learning about all of the mistakes that we've made over the years. And that could directly relate to law. I know that a lot of people who know that they want to go to law school major one of these three things, you know, pre-law history or political science. This is very general in the social sciences realm, but I wanted to put out there like potential paths you can do is work for the government and campaigns. If you're in political science, you can teach, you can always go into consulting. Consulting is like the broadest thing. They accept people from every single major. And you could also directly go to graduate studies if you know research is the route for you. PhDs in social science take literally the longest. I think they take like 10 years to get a PhD in. But if that's the route for you, go for it. And going to the last bucket that I have in here, the arts. This really just references the fact that you're very creative, you're broad minded, and you see the world in a way that not many people see it in. And you're a very expressive person and potential practical majors for something in the arts would be animation, film, graphic design, marketing, and just communication, anything where you can write or express yourself, whether it's through the visual arts or through writing. I feel like those could be potential paths for you. And careers would go into, you know, marketing, advertising, freelance work, actually working in the film industry. And I will caveat this by saying my friend who did go to art school said that finding a job is difficult. And I believe that, but there are a lot of practical routes you can go in the fine arts. One example would be becoming a UX designer because there's constantly apps that people are making. There are constantly designs that people need on their websites. And going into technology under UX designing or any sort of designing, there's always a world for that. So I would say if you are majoring in the arts, definitely think about all of the potential routes you can go. So don't feel limited if you are going to major in the arts. So I hope that kind of made sense. Like this was something that I kind of thought of in a very broad way. And I'll add my notes on the screen here in case you want to screenshot it. But I was just trying to think of things that I wish I knew because I honestly thought I would major in astrophysics and get my PhD and I didn't realize until my senior year that I had a lot of marketable skills in other aspects of like the actual corporate world that I wanted to pursue. So hopefully this helped you feel a bit better about your major and I hope you now know that you should really major in anything and you can think about how your skills relate to potential jobs in the future but don't feel like you're stuck to your specific industry. Like I wasn't stuck to physics. I didn't apply to specific jobs that required physics. And it's gonna be the same for whatever you major in. So don't feel limited and make sure you major in something that you actually like because that's when you're gonna retain the most skills. Thank you for watching this video. If you made it this far and you haven't subscribed already, definitely hit that subscribe button, smash that like button. And I know this is a more conversational video. So if you do wanna see more videos like this or if there's a specific subject you want me to talk about, I'll definitely be happy to go into that. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys at my next video.